Hi everyone and welcome to Studio Jake. I of course am your host Jacob Airy. I talk about um, comic books, I talk about movies, films, anime, the books, music, all kinds of things. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that little bell because YouTube is doing that little thing where they're curating your subscription feed so you may not get everything right away. So go ahead and do that, that way you get notifications when you want to hear my beautiful voice talk about comic books. So. Today, I'm continuing my series on Doomsday Clock, and we're at issue 11. Doomsday Clock is, of course, um, written by Jeff Johns, and it's drawn by Gary Frank. Fantastic artwork, fantastic covers. They've got some really cool variants as well. Um, I've just been, basically, every time one comes out, they have, like, four variants. And so I just show them all to my wife, and I'm like, which one is your favorite? So this month, she picked this one, which is... A launch control console, they're about to launch a missile, and you can see Batman uh, grabbing the guy's wrist. And that's actually how this one opens. So the gist of this one is for some reason uh, America is going crazy because everyone's mad at the Justice League because of what happened in previous episodes where Firestorm uh, was framed for an explosion that happened in Russia and Superman defended him. Uh, but everyone's still mad at him, and they blame the Justice League. Somehow, the Justice League gets when that Dr. Manhattan from, uh, of course, the uh, Watchmen universe uh, found out. Now, a subplot that's happening in this uh, universe is Ozymandias is, of course, pulling all the strings. He's, of course, the villain from the highly overrated uh, Watchmen. And uh, now, uh, one thing that's interesting is... Uh, one in a uh, last issue is you find out that <coughs> excuse me, Doctor Manhattan he has been uh, uh, made friends with this actor, and through this actor, he is looking at all the different versions of Superman, and it's like uh, Doctor Manhattan. So he sees the pre-crisis universe, he sees the post-crisis universe. He sees the final crisis. He sees the new 52. He is seeing the rebirth. Now, um, so he, and so, Lex, and one of the things is he took a picture with this actor, and Lex Luthor has like all these different pictures from all these different uh, time periods. Now, the new Warshak, who is this guy here, Alfred is trying to help him, but uh, he doesn't uh, want to help. Um, he blames him now. These two characters, um, Marionette and Mime, they're from the Watchmen universe. They've gone cuckoo and they're engaged in a war with the Joker over Gotham City. And it's pure chaos. Now, one of the things that uh, happens is, and here's, of course, a picture of the Justice League, is um, Black Adam. He uh, wants to help Firestorm. He knows that Firestorm has been framed, and so he's trying to get Wonder Woman to side with him. So uh, Black Adam brings an army of some supervillains, some anti-heroes, to the United States, and it all is boiling up to Superman having a showdown with Dr. Manhattan. Okay, so <laughs> a couple of things about this story. So the Doomsday Clock has kind of gone off the rails here. So I really think, I, I, I feel bad saying this because it had such a great start. Then it had a couple of filler, or it had a one or two filler issues, but now the series has completely gone off the rails. And I hate to say this because I really love Jeff John's writing. And again, I wanted to say how much I love uh, Gary Frank's artwork. I mean, it's just, it's just fantastic. I mean, Look at this rendering of the Justice League with Wonder Woman standing prominently. You've got Shazam and Batman. You see Starfire and Cyborg and all your favorite characters, even Mr. Miracle. And you've got Martian Manhunter, Nightwing, and Flash. And it's just a fantastic, I mean, it's just fantastic art. But what was supposed to be the bridge between the Rebirth and New 52 has just become another Elseworlds crossover with the Watchmen, who again are 
and I and I know I'm not supposed to say this, but let's be real, The Watchmen was completely overrated. And also, I'm so tired of seeing uh, of seeing Doctor Manhattan's privates. It might have been interesting because it was so bold or whatever in The Watchmen. Now it's just old after The Watchmen, and so. I'm kind of getting, I'm kind of sick of it. It seems like every issue they have to show off his junk, and it's like, I'm getting tired of that. Okay, it's not a gimmick. It shouldn't be a gimmick. It shouldn't be a thing. But I'm, but I'm stuck uh, having to see this, and it's really, really dumb. So, you know, it's got the watch, you know, the clock is winding down. But I hate to, I, I, again, I hate to say this, but this story is completely off the rails. There's too many storylines, and also... Batman is suddenly fighting this guy. Not a few issues back, Batman had gotten beaten up by the Riddler and was strapped to a wheelchair. And of course he got rescued, but still he's already back in action. This story is taking place over a span of maybe just a couple of days. And uh, except if you're reading it from Dr. Manhattan's perspective, I guess, but it's get, it's gotten kind of out of hand. Now, the, again, I really, I, I love Jeff John's writing, but this, it, it, it just has fallen apart. And it, we're to the last freaking issue. And, you know, it's supposed to, it, this, it, this series was supposed to end uh, months ago, but it just kept getting hit with delays and delays. I know it's because Jeff John's, I believe he was promoted in DC Comics and he might have even been promoted in Warner Media along with uh, Jim Lee. So that probably had something to do with it. But at least if you want it to just end, then end it. But instead, I feel like the series could go on for another five issues because there's so many questions. It's like a J.J. Abrams movie. Mystery box after mystery box. Who is this guy? Why did that line matter? What's the history of this? And why is Doc, or, and to put it to plain in this, uh, why did Ozzy Mendia, why does Ozzy Mendias have this old guy who I get, he's supposed to be uh, he's supposed to be uh, uh, Johnny Thunder. Why does he have the Watchmen universe version of Johnny Thunder locked up? Why? We don't know. Is it because of his lamp? Does he need the lamp for some reason? Which we also find out in the Watchmen universe, the uh, Johnny Thunder lamp where he can summon the genie that's supposed to grant him a wish or whatever every once in a while. Um, it's the same lamp that Alan Scott used to make his original Green Lantern ring. So for those of you unfamiliar, um, Alan Scott was the first Green Lantern of Earth, the first human one, but he did, He got his name, uh, actually what happened was he, uh, he found a meteorite called the Star Heart, and he carved a lantern out of it, and that's what gave him his powers. Um, so he didn't actually become an official Green Lantern until much, much later. Of course, uh, his ring is different, than the ones that the Green Lantern Corps give for, uh, you know, specifically. So, anyway, um, why, do, why does Ozymandias need this? Why, is Le why does Lex Luthor care about this photo? What does it matter? Why is Dr. Manhattan doing this to the DC Universe? It's kind of none of his business. I know right now uh, Dr. Manhattan kind of has a god complex because his he now has, like, all these crazy abilities. He's, he's become a Mary Sue. He was a Mary Sue in The Watchmen. They tried to make him not a Mary Sue because, uh, you know, they're saying that he has this emotional drive or whatever. He's totally a Mary Sue, and that becomes more apparent in this one. No one can stop, and he defeats the whole freaking Justice League in just a matter of minutes, and it, it, it's time to end this. And so, like, I'm even wondering, like, you know, uh, you know, he's supposed to have this showdown with Superman, which is what this is building to. Um, you know, I'm one of these people who believes Goku can beat um, Superman. You know, at least Super Saiyan Blue or Ultra Instinct Goku for sure. Uh, yeah, I don't think a guy who can just make things disappear with his mind, I don't think Superman stands much of a chance against him. I'm sorry, I just don't. So, maybe they're not going to fight. At this point, I'm just kind of ready for this to end. I've been reviewing this series for months now um, for delays, sometimes two months, comic, the comics don't come out, it, it, it's time to put this to rest. Uh, you know, I hate to say that. Um, and when issue 12 comes out, um, I'll let you know. Anyway, that's all the time I have for today. One quick note, next Sunday, I'm actually going to be out because I'm going to be at LA Comic Con. Um, a friend of mine, very good friend, actually got me 
uh, three-day passes. So I'm going to go all three days to LA Comic Con. I'm going to visit the booths, take pictures with a few people, get some autographs. Um, so I won't be able to shoot Studio Jake. So my very good friend, Warrior Woman 91 who she has her own YouTube channel, head over there and check that out and subscribe to her podcast. You got it. She is actually going to substitute host for me. So, um, you know, at least subscribe for that. If you don't want to subscribe for me, subscribe for that because she is going to be substitute hosting. It's going to be fantastic. Anyway, that's all the time I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this comic book review. I'll see you next time right here on Studio Jake.